That's what Top Gun's been doing for years, making grown men cry. <laughs> Here comes some G's. Oh, there's five G's. Oh! <laughs> Maybe the the next person to tell you guys how great this movie is. I <laughs> keep it coming. How much fun it's going to be for you guys. It's not a tickle fight. Right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So with all due respect to your performances, when we see you guys in the jets, how much of it is actual acting, and how much of it is you guys reacting to crazy shit that's happening to you? Oh, acting is yeah. reacting, literally. I mean, it's it's all performance actually, because you have the the four cameras in the cockpit, and to be fair, a lot of the time. Depending, you know, with the cameras, you couldn't always see everything. And I think that's why we had so many hours in these things beforehand so that we weren't, we were as comfortable as we could be in the jet. And then you're just able to focus on, because you have to act like you're flying the thing and you're, you have to be in perfect sequence with your pilot. Otherwise the shot falls apart. So, I mean, I think that was a good thing that we were, there were so many things we had to focus on up there to be able to get the shot and all these things that, uh, that yeah, I didn't I wasn't didn't have any of those those moments. <laughs> there was a little bit of both because we got so used to going up there and our bodies were so adapted to the G's yeah. that I think like a month or two in uh, of being in the air, Tom was like, "All right, so you guys have adapted so well that now like there's um, you guys have to start like adding more intensity in certain moments." So then we then had to like just act in like as we're like scraping the side of a mountain, we also had to be like, all right, we're, we're so yeah. used to it that yeah. we have to add a little bit more. Professor Cruz yeah. trained us so well that we, <laughs> <laughs> that we, you know, when you're flying 500 knots mm. through canyons, you're not as phased as you were, mm. you know, months earlier. Let's go, let's see what you got. Before we started actually flying in the jets, of course we could do all the reading and the research and watching from other people's experiences on YouTube, like how to handle the G-forces and mm -hmm. what the maneuvers really feel like, but it's yeah. not until you actually get in the air and be able to feel the like, you know. <laughs> the what? <laughs> <laughs> that is an imitation of a G-pool. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I had a slightly different variation. Yeah. Which is so <laughs> fun. That's, uh, yeah. that's not exactly how it goes. But that's so how I, that's, I yeah. tried to save myself yeah, yeah, up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the all we were doing on the beach football scene, just going. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me, at some point, you got into one of the planes and went for a ride. <laughs> I wish. No, I did not get to. I did not get to experience that there. They're pretty judicious with uh, le letting people inside $80 million of taxpayer, taxpayer funded uh, machinery. So there was a lot, a lot of things to sign before I would have been able to do that, but I did not get to do that, unfortunately. I won't give any specifics away, but at one point your character does get to go up in a plane and I was so very happy that it happened. Is that something you asked to happen? I, I, I did not ask, but I did not say no. <laughs> um, I think it might have been Tom's idea. Uh, he mentioned it to me when we were in the plane shooting a scene that was we were just supposed to be on the runway, uh, never supposed to see us take off. And he asked me if I'd been in a P-51 before, to which I said, no, Tom. Uh, and then he asked if I'd done any aerobatic flying before, to which I said, no, Tom, <laughs> uh, why? Uh, should I be expecting to? And he said, he's just gonna be very gentle. We're gonna do some very gentle roles. It's gonna be very beautiful. Um, so that was how I found out we were gonna be doing that aerobatic flying, um, which was amazing. It was really amazing, you know? And thank goodness it was with him as a pilot for so many reasons. A, cause you know, what a life experience, but also I have so much faith in him. He's so skilled. His exploits are legendary. Is it all signed? Maverick. Boy, your friend? Payback. Fanboy. What do they call you? Bob? No, your call sign. Bob. Um, did everyone love their call signs? Did anybody want to trade out their call signs at all? Don't take the bait, Bob. Heck no. Nah. I think I love Bob. I, I love mine. It. Yeah, I, I think, mine. I think yeah. it spoke to all of us. It's funny, we got the opportunity to. Yeah. Oh, really? And one, one call sign changed, and it made sense. Um, and I was thinking about it, because you hear Phoenix in a lot of, like, it's not uncommon, you hear it in a lot of contexts and there are other characters out there with the name. And um, But then we all sort of earned our call signs in very um, funny ways. Yeah. Uh, what I'll say about that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Save she, it for the deleted She rises tapes. from the ashes. That's just what else. First I'll night say. out. 
And he will pay you back. Yeah, I will. I will actually. Uh, and if you throw me in the ocean, I will bob. You will bob. <laughs> <laughs> I got to. I got to actually like yeah. come up with mine. Yeah. You know, I got. I, I can't, when I when I first uh, when I was even um, when I first got the uh, the job, hmm. immediately the, my original call sign was Slayer, and and which uh, in the first Navy briefing they were like, you know, these are Air Force call signs, these are Navy call signs, they were like, hmm. Air Force call signs like Slayer and Spine Ripper, and I was like. Well, I got to change this. This is an Air Force call sign. So I went down to Miramar, stayed with some naval aviators, mm. really just riffed on what that was going to be. So that's, uh, yeah, Kaczynski, McCory, you know, and I all came yeah, up Hangman. Hangman. Where's he going? That's why we call him Hangman. He'll always hang you out to dry. <laughs> you need to have a call sign that would be perfect for Penny. I don't have one that would be perfect for Penny. I had one in real life at one point, okay. a very long time ago, um, which has nothing to do with Penny, but I, in college, I kind of forced myself onto the running team um, just because I really wanted to be on a team but right. didn't play any sports, which is, doesn't really work. So, But I thought, maybe I can will myself to run fast enough. And um, so they let me on, kind of. I think I might have been more a mascot than anything because I never competed, which is a little suspicious. But I was on the roster, okay. and on the roster we all had nicknames that were assigned to us, and mine was Death Grip, probably because I was the slowest with the least training and the least skill, uh, but I was very determined. I love it. And I always nice. held on. Nice. What happened to movie soundtracks? I mean, I grew up in a time when, when every film had a soundtrack and Top Gun was one of the pivotal ones. Um, I just wonder where they went to and which ones did you guys listen to a ton? Oh, man. I mean, that's a great, you know, a soundtrack that I listen to all the time is Pulp Fiction. Oh, that's a oh. wonderful one. One of the last yeah. great ones, actually. Yeah. To be honest with yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. That's an, I, I've never really contemplated where they just kind of fade away and then you don't really notice they're gone. But that goes into big movies as well. So you need big movies to have soundtracks yeah. that kind of resonate with people. Right. So that's the great thing about okay. Top Gun Maverick is going to have Lady Gaga's song. So that's going to be one of the yeah. new tunes to come out of it. So. Absolutely. Did you have one? I did, actually. And you know what's interesting? I knew the music before I even knew it was a, uh, a movie. Because I'm this movie came out way before I was born, but it was uh, Marvin Gaye Trouble Man, which is like one of the most sonically beautiful things ever put on wax. Yes. And a friend of mine sent me the album and I was listening to it and then like later I was like, oh, there's a whole movie. Uh, but you know, soundtracks are a big deal. You know, the perfect song will help you really encapsulate how you feel about that movie at that time. And then it becomes special forever. Yeah, I mean, obviously Top Gun was the one that stuck with me that summer of 86. The original Top Gun, for sure, that Take My Breath Away always got stuck in my head. Kenny Loggins, you know, uh, Footloose, you yeah. know, we all remember that. Um, Kenny's obviously got a song in our movie. You uh, are now officially associated with two franchises with amazing soundtracks, Footloose oh, and right Top on. Gun. Which yeah, one yeah. do you prefer? Which one? Yeah, which Ken, I'm just in the Kenny Loggins fan club, I guess, man. I'm going to go see Loggins and Messina at the Bowl. Yeah. I'm a huge fan. I mean, I, I'm just, I, yeah, it's great. I'm just revisiting movies from the 80s. Okay. Every little bit, that's what I'm going to do. What I'm excited about this is, you know, Lady Gaga wrote an original song for our film, and she did, you know, such an incredible job that Hans used the theme to create the love theme for the film and orchestrated it. So, you know, I can't wait for people to hear that. I think Lady Gaga's song, really, she really knocked it out of the park. It's pretty phenomenal. Damn right. Excuse me, miss. Hey, hey, hey. Don't worry, I'll take care of this. Like Tom in the original, you get to sing in this movie. Oh, yeah. And you can sing, man. You're a oh, great thanks, singer. Dude. So thanks, how'd man. you feel about that scene, approaching it? Any trepidation or? I, I think, well, I was, it's one of those things where I told them right off the bat. I said I'm. I said I played piano when I was younger. I still dabble a little bit, but I want to. But I, I don't need a double. I will play and sing this live. Okay. And so, uh, but then you realize it's a pretty hard song, and <laughs> he sings pretty high. But for me, that those are always just good kind of motivators to like fear of failure. I think is. A lot of actors say that, but it, it is very true. Show me what you're made of. There's a, a speech in the middle of the movie that I love where Maverick says, Push beyond your limits. So who, for you, from an acting standpoint, was your Maverick? Who pushed you beyond where you were comfortable? I've had, I've been very fortunate in my career to work with some of the most talented people in the world, and I this is certainly one of them. Um, you know, and I've had a lot of incredible uh, teachers down the line, too. And and one of the things that I learned was like the the uncomfortable part is the is the part where you learn the most. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that that's gets to what you were saying with with what Tom's uh, character was saying in the film was like, let's see what your limits really are. Mm -hmm. You know, there was there's the line from uh, the right stuff too, where it's like, let's find out where that demon lives. Like, right. let's see where it is, and and you don't know it until you until you go past it. Sometimes Tom kind of serves that role on the film. It's I would describe it more as him bringing you along on his energy, mm -hmm. and uh, also he's taking part in the casting process. So there's the added factor that he chose you in the first place. So there's confidence that comes along with that. And then he pushes you and pushes you in a good way. Uh, so he would be, yeah, he is my maverick. I think Tom pushed, pushed me every day, you know, with good reason. This is a really special film for him, a special character to come back and play. So we wanted to honor the original, but make sure that we tried to surpass it and tell our own story. Part of the great, I think, why this movie is resonating with so many people is that we're also seeing the evolution of this character. You know, you make different decisions when you're 25 than yeah. you do when you're 50. And different things mean different things to you. So responsibility means something very different when you're 25 than it does when you're 50. And loss and 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 grief and, and friendship and right. duty and all of those things that, that are big themes in the film. Well, and life experience too. You yes, know, there's, for sure. there's learning in the classroom, and there's actually doing, which yep. is another big theme of this. Yes, movie. it is. And does that apply to acting also? Very much so. Yeah. You know, you you it's acting is a very weird uh, thing, in, in that you you can't just practice it by yourself. Right, <laughs> right, right. It's not violin playing or, or or painting or something. You can't just go in a room by yourself and become an expert at it. You actually have to do it with other people and in front of an audience and and get that kind of feedback. So. There is the, the the sense of the man in the arena, for sure. What is one thing that Tom gave you guys uh, that you will take away from this production and use with you for the rest of your career? I think the responsibility of, of like storytellers, of, of always, um, of not uh, being okay with just doing an okay job, you know? Like, or just always pushing the limit, no matter what type of, if it is a movie like Top Gun Maverick, or if it's an indie drama, whatever it is, it's in pushing the envelope forward in our medium, because we've, yeah. I mean, there's, I think I looked it up the other day, like 500,000 movies in existence, right? Or something like, or a, a bigger number. And it's like, we could just always watch one of those or if we're gonna bring something new to the table, it should have new life or just be pushed to the absolute limit. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that. It was sort of like, it's interesting because not only am I working with, you know, the icon that is, you know, Tom Cruise, but Ed Harris is like, I love that dude. I think I've seen the abyss more than most people, probably <laughs> too much. I think it may be a little bit unhealthy, my relationship with that movie, but he's a consummate professional. He's really nice guy. You know, even in the makeup trailer, he'd be chatting me up and so, I just, it was one of those experiences you have, which you kind of can't even think about it in real time. You kind of have to wait till you're finished with it at home and you're laying in bed going, did that shit really happen? <laughs> That's so crazy. I got pictures, I guess it did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was, I mean, I feel very lucky. Good morning, aviators. Today's exercise is dog fighting. Two versus one. Hey, you gotta be kidding. Jay, how did growing up in a military family allow you to bring some more insight to the character? You know, I think the thing for me was like, there was this like, this pride and this like uh, respect and even responsibility, which I think everyone ended up feeling the responsibility, especially as we got to meet more of the pilots and more of the community, the aviation community at large. But for me, I remember the first time we drove on base at North Island, I was like, oh, this is my childhood. Right. Like growing through the gates, showing someone my ID, like this is literally like all these memories just started to pop back in my head. Mm -hmm. And I just had this sense of like, oh, I know that's the PX, that's the theater. Like, oh, there's a subway here. Yep, there's a subway on our base. There was all this familiarity um, that immediately just kind of kicked in for me. And I think I even found myself, with the exception of one night where we went out, um, uh, I think I found myself even very much being like back on like the kind of clock that I was on when I was a kid. Like you're up at this time, you do this thing, you hear the horns in the morning, you hear, right? Like there were all these things that just started to kick in. And for me, it was just this immense like pride. And also um, the responsibility of wanting to portray men and women who, you know, sacrifice their, their lives and time away from their family every single day to protect this country. We're going into combat on a level no living pilot's ever seen. Your reputation precedes you. I have to admit, I wasn't expecting an invitation back. They're called orders, Maverick. Uh, Mr. Bruckheimer, back in 1986, when a movie did as well as Top Gun, uh, you would try to make a sequel out of it. Was there any push to maybe get a sequel going at that time? Yeah, there was. We, we certainly worked on it, but we got sidetracked uh, with all the movies that 
we had to shoot right away and that's kind of what happens in our business and Tom went off and did a lot of terrific movies working with great directors and writers and so it, it finally came together when there was some zeitgeist that wanted to say it's about time we get this movie made mm -hmm. and thanks to Joe he came up with a story that Tom Tom loved. Just want to manage expectations. What's the hardest part about having a movie get moved back when you know it's good? Anticipation is a is a is real. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're just uh, we're we're so proud of the film, and we saw the movie. The cast and I saw the movie in in deep pandemic, lockdown pandemic. We all went to a, a theater with masks on, and we sat ten seats apart. Right, and, right. And uh, and we were so thrilled with the movie, and 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 then we were like, well, is it ever going to come out? <laughs> we don't even know. So the fact that actually we're getting to share it now with with the world is tremendously exciting. People ask me that, oh, man, you got to be so bummed. This movie's not coming out, and all these things, and I don't know. I think personally, I've just never been. I, I would have been more anxious if it was delayed and it was horrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To be fair, but but with everything else, I'm just really proud of the the work we did and. I wouldn't have wanted it to come out if theaters weren't open and people didn't feel comfortable sitting next to each other and really kind of having that um, summer blockbuster experience. So I'm, I'm, I'm all good with it. I think it was always meant to be a huge community film mm -hmm. and also, you know, epically on a big screen with a wonderful sound system. And I mean, they designed specific IMAX cameras for this film that could go in jets at certain speeds and pull Gs and all the things. And so to know that it required community and to know that we were so far away from being able to gather was, that I think that was probably the hardest thing. What an answer. That was yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, what can yeah. you, you can't even say anything. I, I feel like I, I was never feeling like, uh, like we got to get this thing out a ASAP. Like we should put it out on streaming or anything. It felt very comfortable. Like I, I'm really glad that Paramount and Tom and Joe know that like, there's no other way right. than in theaters with a with a packed audience because this is how this film was meant to be yeah. seen. Yeah. I mean, I think the hardest thing for me was just not being with you guys. Like for yeah. me, it was just like, oh, I wanted us to all. We had such a great time filming right. and bonded so much that you know it's very normal to go away for ten months to a year and then the movie, then you come back and you do your press tour and the movie comes out. And like for me, it was like, oh, I can't wait to get back with the gang. Like, oh, yeah. like, we're, it's like going back to school. It's like that morning before you go back to school and you can't sleep. And you know, like the outfit, did you guys ever do this? You like know exactly what you're yeah. gonna wear. And you're gonna like look great. And you're gonna like say the cool thing and pick yeah. the right locker. But we never got to, we, it just got pushed out and pushed out. And finally, we're now at school. And I just feel excited to be here with you guys. And it's a great first day of school. It's outfit, a great Jay. first day. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you, I appreciate that. It's really good to think about the reason that the release day is moving back and back. We were all, going through a pandemic together, sure. all of us. Nobody was excluded from that. You know, unless you had a super secret satellite somewhere, you could be on another planet for a while. But for most of us, you know, we really had to hunker down. And so for me, even though, yeah, you always want people to see stuff, but you want them to really experience it at the right time. And I feel like our movie now is this wonderful present kind of waiting for us at the end of this sort of long journey. It's coming out in the perfect time. You know, right after the pandemic, we were really fighting for the cinemas to, to, to stay open and, and, and keep pushing forward. We want people to be in the cinemas. And I think this is the perfect time. Timing is everything. When it ended, I said, uh, oh, that's why they pushed it back. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes you know what? We were all frustrated, but I got to say, Tom and Paramount did the right thing. This is the most cinematic movie I think I've ever seen in yep. my whole life. Ever made. To see it with an audience, <laughs> it's, it's, it's truly, it's like there's nothing like it. Your kind is headed for extinction. Maybe so, sir. But not today. before they kick me out. Is Bad Boys 4 done and done? Are we gonna go back to that world? It's like, I can't answer that question. Other People with higher up have to make that decision. Gotcha. Well, I love seeing them on screen again, so. Oh, thanks. Thanks, guys. Appreciate thank you. Thanks, man.